I'm a boy junior. <laughs> where are you going to find a nicer kid than Junior? Now, that's where you left yourself wide open. You should never have brung up Junior. Why shouldn't I bring him up? He's my son, isn't he? Who else is going to bring him up? I mean, bring him up in a conversation. Your Junior's the weak link in your family. My Junior's a weak link. My ju Gillis, you certainly got a nerve. Give me back my tomato. Relax, Riley. We're only discussing. You question me with a question, I answer you with an answer. Your Junior's are nothing. My Junior's are nothing. Now, if you want to talk about sons, look at my egg bite. I've looked at your egg bite, and you have my deepest sympathies. Okay, maybe he ain't no Gregory Beck, but my boy has got it up here. Yeah, well, he ought to shampoo more often with kerosene. What I'm talking about is talent. If you want your boy to amount to something, you got to watch him when he's young. Find out what his talent is and nourish it. Why? Why? Because a delicate flower won't grow unless it's fertilized. My egg bite is a flower, and I'm his fertilizer. Well, my junior's got plenty of talent. Yeah? What? Well, he... Well, last summer, he swam underwater for five minutes without coming up for air. Now, that's talent, ain't it? Oh, that's a fine talent. If you're raising a barracuda. I mean talent for a career. Did you see this? It's a copy of what they're going to say about my egg bite in the class yearbook. What class yearbook? Didn't your junior show you his? Oh, I can guess why. Don't worry, he'll show it to me. He just probably forgot, that's all. Let me read you this. Egg bite killers. Activities? President of the chemistry club. Best subject? Chemistry. Prizes? Aluminum medal for chemistry. Hobby? Chemistry. And guess what it says on the future profession? Unemployed. Yep. Yeah? I'm a chemical engineer. Junior, did you find that stuff for your yearbook yet? Yeah, Pop, I just found it. I don't understand you, Riley. You're not reasonable. For months, you don't take the slightest interest in Junior's school. Now, all of a sudden, you go overboard. You want our son Peg to have a future, don't you? Well, of course I do. All right. I want to see his future on paper. Here it is, Pop. The page proof it was in my briefcase. All right, let's see. Here we are. Chester A. Riley, Jr. Activities. Substitute cheerleader? Cheerleader? Yeah, watch this. Squash them like grapes. Pick up the pits. Three cheers for John J. Boskowitz. Team, team, team. Cheerleader? For that, I paid 50 bucks to have his tonsils taken off. Oh, I think cheerleaders are swell. Gee whiz, Pop, what's the matter? All right, we'll let that pass. Let's look up future professions. Here it is. Future profession. Question mark. Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Oh, be reasonable, Riley. Simply means he hasn't made up his mind yet. Well, he's got to make up his mind. He's 13 years old. All he's got on his mind now is movies, movies, and television. And what did you have on your mind when you were 13 years old? When I was 13, Peg. All right, I admit I was a little wild. And you were right not to elope with me. Ow! Gee, you got sharp teeth. Come here, son. Sit down. Now, look, son. Isn't there something that you'd like to do? Gosh, I don't know. Well, you've got to want to be something. Ain't I right, Peg? He will one of these days. Well, isn't there some kind of work you'd like to do? Well, I wouldn't mind a job like yours, I guess. That's fine. That's just dandy. I can hear the horse laugh I'll get when I get up at that school meeting and say, my son wants to be like me. What school meeting? And that's another thing. Why didn't you tell me about the father and son meeting? Well, I, um... Oh, you I... just forgot. Wasn't that it, dear? Yeah, that's right. No. I just didn't think Pop would want to go. What do you mean I wouldn't want to go? All the other fathers are going, ain't they? They're going to get up and talk about their sons. I'm just as big a show-off as they are, ain't I? You certainly are, dear. Maybe bigger. Thanks, Peg, for backing me up. Now, look, son. Excuse me, Pop. i got to go finish my homework. Squash them like grapes. Pick up the seeds. Three cheers for John J. Boskowitz. Why, it don't even rhyme. Never mind, dear. It isn't that serious. He's still a baby. There's plenty of time for him to make up his mind later on when he goes to college. There is not time, Peg. It's getting late. I gotta know what his talent is so he can start building it up. Look, for instance, suppose he wanted to be an artist. All right. So then I give him some paints and a brush. 
Or maybe he wants to be a writer, so I give him a pad and pencil. Or he wants to be a banker, and I give him... I don't want him to be a banker. He'll make up his mind when the time comes. Maybe, you know, Peg, talent runs in families. Let's see now. Whoever amounted to anything on my side of the family? Let's go to your side of the family. Well, I had a cousin uh, once who was a great surgeon. No kidding. Yeah, uh, James Prose. He's very famous. Maybe Junior takes after him. Oh, don't be silly. Why not? Surgery. That could be his talent. Only it's hidden. But if it's there, I'll find it. What are you going to do? Have Junior take out your appendix? Now, that's a little ridiculous, Peg. You know I had my appendix out a year ago. But you still got yours. Oh, no, Riley, wait a minute. I mean, well, I'll think of something. Yeah, I'll give you something to think about, dear. Something. Junior, a father's got a duty to his son. So when I butt in and try to tell you what Here to do... Here we are. Mmm, well, my favorite dish, roast chicken. Now you go ahead and carve, dear. With pleasure. Here's a knife, Pop. Thank you. Uh, wait a minute. What's the matter? What are you staring at me for? Peg, look at Junior's hands. Hold them up. I washed them. I don't mean that. Look at his fingers, Peg. So long and slender and delicate. Go on and carve, will you, Riley? Please, Peg. Junior, you call. Me? Oh, now, Riley. Go ahead, Doctor. Uh, Junior. Okay. I always wanted to carve. You always wanted to carve? You see, Peg, I was right. Grab a hold of that scalpel and start operating, Doctor. Okay, nurse. What do you have, Mom? I'll take a leg, dear. And uh, I'll have an arm. I mean, a wing. You take white meat for yourself, Junior. Okay. Well, here goes. Gee, this chicken's tough. It is not. It's like butter. Junior, don't chop at the leg like that. If that was a human being on that platter, he'd resent it. I guess I'm not very good at this. Oh, no, Doctor. You are good. You are good. You're very good. Go ahead. A little encouragement. Uh, here's the leg for you, Mom. Thank you, dear. And here's a wing for you, Pop. The wing? You call this the wing? This is... a fine surgeon you turned out to be. No direction. Some surgeon. The way he was tearing at that poor chicken. Oh, forget it, will you? That's all you keep harping about. I can't forget it. A father's got a duty to his kid. I'm gonna make something of that boy if I have to... Where is he, anyway? Now, you leave him alone. He's in his room reading. <laughs> some son we got in his room reading. He's got some new book about big game hunting in Africa. No kidding. He's interested in that? I guess so. He's had his nose in that book for about a week. Hey, Peg. That's it. That's his talent. A big game hunter. He'll be a Frank Buck. Oh, for heaven's sake. That's even better than being a doctor. He'll bring him back alive. Stop dreaming, dear, will you? Gee, Peg, I can see it all now. He's a big game hunter. Junior's got a safari. They're crossing a steaming desert, trying to get over a river. They're chopping at the underbrush. And they're stalking elephants. They're trapping lions. And they're shooting tigers. Peg, that takes guts. That takes real courage. Help, help, Mom! That's Junior! Come on, come on, Peg! Help, Mom, come on, help, help! Junior, what's the matter, what's the matter? There's a mouse in my room. Case Y. Patient was 13-year-old boy suffering from complex new roses during adolescence. Oh, junior stay tame. Chief symptoms. Indecision. Vaccination. Uh, 
exhalation, sense of inferiority, lack of interest. That's Junior's case exactly. Analysis revealed basic cause to be an octopus complex and a deep-rooted hatred of his father. Oh, no. He hates me. How can he hate me when I'm so lovable? However, complete cure was affected by inducing, inducing patient to talk freely and frankly admit his father hatred. Once this mental block was removed, patient became normal and adjusted and today is outstanding lawyer. Outstanding lawyer. Imagine that. Just because the kid admitted he hated his father. <laughs> hey, Junior! Junior, come here quick! You call me, Pop? Junior, how would you like to be an outstanding lawyer? A lawyer? Yeah, that'd be keen. Okay, lay down on the couch. Huh? I said lay down on the couch. I'm not tired. Junior, I'm your father. Do as I say. Lay down on the couch. Okay, I'll lie down. Now tell me, son, who's your father? My what? Now, don't get up. Don't get up. Stay right there. Just tell me who your father is. Why, you are. Now we're getting someplace. Uh, how do you feel about me, Junior? How do I feel? Yeah. You hate me, don't you? Who, me? Of course not. Just stay there, Junior. Come on now. Come on, admit it. You hate me. I don't hate you. Don't be stubborn, Junior. Before I'm finished with you, you'll hate me. Oh, come on, Pop. Will you let me out of here? Will you please stay there? You're not getting up until you're cured. Now, come on. Talk freely. Admit it. You hate me. Say you hate me and you'll make me the happiest man in the world. Well, Pop, I don't hate you. I love you. You don't love me. You hate me. What is the meaning of this? Peg, I got some horrible news for you, and we might as well face it. Junior loves me. He's a hopeless case. Is that you, dear? Hello, Peg. Oh, hello, dear. You're home early tonight. Well, tonight's the school meeting, and, well, I got a lot of things to straighten out. Where's Junior? He's in his room. Hey, now, listen. You leave him alone, Dr. Freud. He's my boy, too, and I'm not worried about his future. Oh, Peg, here's another carrot. Gillis couldn't finish my lunch. Peg, what am I going to say tonight at the school meeting? What you always say at the school meeting? Wake me up when it's over. But I haven't got a speech. All the other fathers will have speeches, and I'll be there speechless. So what? Now you go on and get dressed, and then we'll have supper, and we'll get over to the school. I ain't going. You're not going? No. Well, all right. I can't make you go. Guess I'll just have to go alone with Junior. Oh, say, Mom. Oh, hi, Pop. Say, Mom, could I have two spools of thread and a needle and a pair of scissors? Yeah, it's in my sewing basket in Bab's room, but what do you want with it? I had a swell idea to make something. Our uh, son. Instead of taking chemicals and inventing something, he's playing around with a needle and thread. We're raising a tailor. <laughs> Fine profession. What's wrong with being a tailor? What's wrong with it? Hey, that's right. There's nothing wrong with it. Only not a tailor, Peg, a, a dress designer. Maybe that's his talent. Oh, now don't start in again. First you had him a surgeon and a big game hunter, now a designer. Peg, I got a feeling that this is it. A dress designer. Why, there's a fortune in it. Gee, he'll have a saloon in Paris, a saloon in New York. Salon. Oh. And just think, Peg, when all them society debutantes come out, they'll be coming out of his dresses. I can see it all now, Peg. We're visiting him in Paris. There's a big sign with his name on it. Our son. Madam Junior Riley. <laughs> well, a weird idea. Come down to earth, will you? Just because he asked for a needle and thread doesn't mean that he's No, gonna... Peg, I got a hunch that this is it. That boy of mine has found himself at last. A dress designer. Come on, Peg, let's go see what the little genius oh, is creating. Listen, Riley, I got supper to get on, don't... Come on, Peg, this is more important than supper. <laughs> Wait till Gillis hears about this. Come on, Peg, come on. Well, Madam Junior? Huh? Show your mother and me your creation. My what? Your creation, what you made with the needle and thread. 
Oh, no. Come on, dear. Don't be so modest. Well, here it is. What is it? It's a yo-yo. A little genius created a yo-yo. <laughs> you know, Peg, it takes some men 50 years to become a failure. Junior made it in 13. And so, in summing up, I leave you parents and sons with this thought. My 30 years as a junior high school teacher have convinced me of the truth of the old saying, the boy is father to the man. Teacher's a wonderful speaker, isn't he, Junior? Yeah, he's okay for a teacher. Hey, there's Pop. Oh, Riley, I'm so glad you came, dear. Hello, Peg. Hello, Junior. And now, we're going to hear from another proud father, Mr. James Madison Gillis. Oh. I, think I hope they don't ask me to get up and make a speech. Chairman, fellow fathers and mothers, I'm sure we just all enjoyed the very cute little speech the teacher just gave us, but now we come to something interesting. Now, I ain't the kind of father likes to boast about his kid. I believe that actions speak louder than words. So now my son, Egbert, will perform one of his very unusual chemical experiments right before your very eye. Egbert? these sweet people. What are you going to invent with that chemical set? Well, I think I'll make NACL. Did you hear that, folks? He's going to make knackle. Gee. Gee, Junior, why didn't you have a knack for making knackle? Okay, Egbert, the floor is yours. I'm not quite ready yet, Papa. Oh. Well, while we're waiting, we can waste a little time by listening to one of the other fathers. Oh, how about my good friend Riley? Come on, folks. Let's give him a nice big hand. He's a little shy. No, no. Come on, Riley. Don't be so modest. Tell all the folks about your junior's future. I can. I'm keeping it a secret. <laughs> Riley, go on. Say something. Everybody's staring. Sure. Come on. Go There's on. nothing to it, Riley. There you are. They're all yours. Well, I... Excuse me. Well... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, fellow fathers and fellow mothers. <laughs> I have, uh, I've been studying my junior for quite some time now, and uh, uh, for a while there, we thought he was going to be uh, one, one of those, and then we found out that he wasn't going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then we found out that he had some talent for, well, he was, uh, he was starting to make those. And then we found out he didn't have any talent for that. So then we went out and we bought him one of those, uh, it was a large, they had him over in that. Then he wanted a, a needle and thread. He wanted to go big game hunting. <laughs> so I, I now give you my wife's son, Junior. Mom, I can't make a speech. Go on, dear. Say something. You'll be fine. Pop, I can't make a speech. Why not? I just made a lovely speech. Papa, I'm ready now. Well, my Edward is ready now. Okay, Riley, sit down. Go ahead, Egbert, my dear boy. In this here test tube here, I have some hydrochloric acid here. You hear that, folks? Hydrochloric acid. Go ahead, my little darling. This is a match. You've got to admit, Peg, he is clever. I now take care of this alcohol lamp here. And heat the contents of this test tube here. Observe how it burns with a bright... Let me look at you. Look out. 
What happened to your eyebrows? Oh, my poor little agent. He lost his eyebrows. Bob, my hand got burned. Oh, my hand. Is there a doctor in the house? He'll be okay. I know what to do. I know what to do. He'll be okay. Hold out your hand. Put this tannic acid on. That'll do it. Here, it'll be okay in a second oh, now. Oh, that feels good, Junior. Here, here, I'm sorry. I'm a doctor. Let me look at that boy's hand. I put some tannic acid on the doctor. Well, that's exactly what I would have done myself. That's quick thinking, my boy. Someday you'll be a great doctor. A doctor? I'm going to shoot a board of education for this. But, Papa, I'm all right now. Are you with me or against me? You're not all right. Shut up. I'm going to sue. That lamp, there must have been something wrong with that lamp. I'll sue. You can't sue, Mr. Gillis. It was Egbert's own lamp. The school's not responsible. The boy's right, Mr. Gillis. You have no case here. Ah, what do you know about this? Well, aside from being the teacher, I also happen to be a lawyer. A lawyer? Well, we'll see about this. I'm taking this case to court. I'll bet you lose, Mr. Gillis. I'll bet you five to one. Hey, did you hear that? I'll bet you five to one. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I know what my son's gonna be. He's gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, and a bookmaker. <laughs> and I'm mighty proud of you, as I always was. 